Welcome to The Countdown, the show that counts down the five coolest things happening in space right now. Coming up in this episode, a physics mystery solved billions of miles from Earth, a gopher's love affair with cosmic rockets, and seven minutes of terror on Mars. But first... Five! Galaxies from the early universe usually look kind of lumpy or blobby. Scientists think back then these young, wild, and crazy galaxies crashed into each other all of the time, messing up their nice shapes. So astronomers were pretty shocked when they viewed images from the Hubble Space Telescope. In those photos, which are snapshots from about 10 billion years ago, they discovered a galaxy with a swirly shape. Should sound familiar, that's a lot like our own Milky Way galaxy. The new galaxy, with the very sexy name of BX442, looks a little mixed up, as though it had collided with another galaxy at some point, but this collision might have actually given it the spiral shape. For example, a study from 2011 hints that the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy collided with our own galaxy to give it a swirly. So the same thing could have happened with BX442 just 11 billion years ago. The research appears in the July 19th issue of Nature. Four. If you love images of Earth from space, it's time to party! This week marks the 40th anniversary of the Landsat satellite program. You see a lot of these images in Google Maps under satellite view. Launched in 1972, Landsat is the longest running program photographing our planet from orbit. And to celebrate, the US Geological Survey asked everyone to vote on their favorite image from the Earth is Art collection. These images contain frequencies of light invisible to humans, so artists filled them in with crazy colors to highlight geological features. The winning image was one called Van Gogh from Space, which shows a cloud of green phytoplankton swirling around Gutland, a Swedish island in the Baltic Sea. It's supposed to look like Van Gogh's Starry Night painting. Uh, voting is closed, but do you think they made the right choice? Let us know in the comments. Three. Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 are two space probes on missions to nowhere. The US launched them in the 1970s to explore the system's outer planets. And when that was done, they just let them keep going and going and going. So in the late 90s, when the Pioneers were about 8 billion miles from Earth, scientists noticed the spacecraft were slowing down. In empty space, that's pretty weird. So they started calling the slowdown the Pioneer Anomaly, and pretty much questioned if Einstein's general theory of relativity was totally busted. The good news is that it's not. After poring over data for the past seven years, scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory announced the culprit. Turns out heat from the Pioneer's nuclear battery just barely slows it down. One of the researchers says it's as if you're driving a car and the photons shooting from your headlights push you backwards. The force is really, really, really small, so don't turn off your headlights for a better fuel economy, because that's really stupid. Two. On a furrier note, this week we met a rocket-loving gopher living in the former Soviet Republic of Kazakhstan. Video of this little guy surfaced in May, but racked up hundreds of thousands of views in the last week. The gopher resides at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, one of the oldest and busiest spaceports in the world. In fact, the famous Sputnik satellite launched from there in 1957, sparking the space race. How does this gopher manage the hustle and bustle of a busy spaceport when he's not chewing on camera lenses? Just fine, apparently. He's far enough from the launch pad to avoid becoming a Kazakh shish kebab. One. Seven minutes of terror. Sounds like the name of a heavy metal band or maybe a very short horror movie, but it's actually what NASA engineers go through every time they land something on Mars. On August 5th, NASA's Curiosity rover, a car-sized robotic science lab, will try to touch down on the red planet. But first, it needs to survive speeding through the Martian atmosphere at nearly 20 times the speed of a bullet. NASA engineers won't know if the rover survived until a full seven minutes after Curiosity enters the atmosphere. Hence, therefore, the seven minutes of terror. During that time, Curiosity needs to slow down from 13,000 miles an hour to a full stop. A supersonic parachute will help, but it has to cut that loose and start firing rockets from a platform called the Sky Crane. Curiosity will then dangle from the Sky Crane like a marionette doll, rockets still firing, until it touches red dirt. It's so simple, what could possibly go wrong? Seven Minutes of Terror, coming soon to a planet near you. That's it for this episode of The Countdown. For links and more information on all of these stories, visit scientificamerican.com forward slash The Countdown. There's a link down there for all the lazy people. But before you do that, watch another video or subscribe to YouTube's Space Lab channel. 
For Scientific American, I'm Dave Mosher. <laughs>